Hello and welcome to Let's Play in the Space 2, Series 7, Episode 69. I'm JC Proton. We're picking up at turn 224. We are playing Horatio, the standard faction, on endless difficulty in an endless duration game. Uh, so, uh, at the end of last turn, I decided to um, go ahead and do some upgrades here on these uh, Boolean freighters. To, uh, to, to pump this up a little notch here. And I also wanted to um, increase the rate at which I'm proceeding with invasions over here. So I went ahead and queued up another couple of invaders uh, and another 12 or 15 um, siege ships as well. <clears throat> so should... Uh, so I built uh, a bunch of those, however many that is. So it looks like looks like more than a dozen, uh, maybe a little, maybe uh, 15, 16, 17, I don't know, something like that. I built a number of them, <clears throat> and actually I completed some modernizations. So all of those uh, ships will get sent here, and then I'll forward them from here over here into the Craver space. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll go ahead and just kind of get things rolling. Move the fleets. And he did actually look like he moved fleet over this way. This one's turning around. It looked to me like he was assembling a fleet together and getting ready to face off with me at Ibony, but Maybe not. <clears throat> so over here we have a couple more carriers. I don't see any shenanigans afoot over here. So I don't think I really need to keep those carriers over here. So I, I can go ahead and send them into the Craver space. I have a uh, adequate fleet here. 35,000 should be fine. With a lot more beef <laughs> in place. So that's good. I have one carrier over here. I think I have one over here. Yeah. It's ba basically just a naked carrier with one attacker over there. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, right now we don't have any conflict going with Vodiani. So we're, we're, we're pals. We're pals with everybody except the Cravers. So at this point, uh, we're sieging down Ebony. We're going to be doing an invasion there. Looks like next turn, on turn 225. Let's see, there's a siege ship. Can go this way. <clears throat> there's another siege ship. You can head over. I think that's most of the ship movement. <clears throat> I may uh, I may combine some of this together and put a fleet together and start sieging on Menace. There we go. Yeah. So uh, Ebony will be ready for invasion next turn. It'll be down un well under a hundred, down to what something like thirty or forty. Uh, defending troops. Uh, we completed research on interstellar windshields, which gives us lunar suburbs plus two population slots per lunar anomaly on planets, and also plus three population slot on gas. Both of those are expensive structures. They cost about 9,000 industry to build. <clears throat> So I'll have to uh, put those into the build queues everywhere where they can go. Koros Apogee has leveled up again. The Academy. Oh, wow. I've got my sound volume way too low. Sorry about that. 
Academy has reached level 10. So heroes will start at level 10 when recruited. Nice. Let's make the screen a bit brighter as well. Governor Baramaksa has gained level 14. He, he's, he leveled three times. I think that's the one I put in at AG. Yeah. So he's going bananas with the leveling. Okay, well, let's do stuff. Let's see, more influence. That's more influence. Let's do the thing that reduces his assignment duration. Ooh, there you go. Bean counter, that's a really good skill. And let's see, that is a senator skill. I believe he's a scientist? Yeah, he's a scientist. I don't really want him to be a senator. I like him being governor, but I don't want him to be a senator. I prefer to have my senator. My, if I have a science senator, I want it to be this guy um, because he's got that Horatio ability for increased deposit value on luxury resource deposits. To me, that's the best one, <clears throat> especially in a scarce resource galaxy. So I want him to be my senator. Okay, so he's done. And we got the frog guy. And let's see, he's done. And he's kind of running out of places to put skill points to. <clears throat> Game you play, but we have a proposal. 50 giga lattice. All right, population are growing. Uh, we'll play with that off camera. Um, I kind of want to um, <clears throat> shuffle some population around to the new, uh, the new colonies that I just established. Uh, that have like one population, two population kind of thing. Um, so I want to send a few population around here and there. Um, let's see, this one is full. And I think it still has population. Yeah, it still has food waiting. That was the, This is where that huge food ship was. <clears throat> that was almost... The, the, the icon on the map was almost the size of the entire star system. It was like over 3,000 food, 3,500 3, food, 3,000 food, I don't know, something like that. So Pilgrim's just established, and Rotenev. So that's these two here. Um, I'll get those build cues done off camera, but for sure, um, first things coming out are going to be... system upgrade on both of them and anywhere where I built um, upgrades I'm going to continue the upgrades <clears throat> let's see where I'm at on resources so yeah let's go ahead and do that That level three will go to four. And so on. And so I'll, I'll just basically go and queue those up off camera everywhere where I can. Let's see if I, well, I'll just do it right now real quick. Let's see if I can get through all of them. I don't know if I'll have enough resources to do all of them. We're going to find out. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess that was it. <clears throat> so 
So if we sort by by population, so everything that's not a four, everything that's a four is building other stuff. Everything that's not a four is building upgrades, system upgrades. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So that's all good. We did that last turn. Okay, cool. So right now, um, I have the highest production uh, between these two is Meta and Tactogen, but I know I'm going to be getting more Endless Foundries um, deposits. Uh, it's going to be happening because Cravers have several. Um, Ebony has a deposit of Endless Foundries right here. And then there's another one... Where is it? No. Maybe. I, I'm pretty sure this is one over here. At the Craver Home System. A Ruins 4 on a Toxic. And then I think there's one over here as well. At Nalan. Yeah. So, there are more deposits I'll be getting of Endless Foundries. So, I don't really need to try to rebalance things. Um... In that regard, I think uh, I think the bottleneck's gonna still end up being blue cap eventually. So, <laughs> okay, and those carriers can head this way. <clears throat> so we need to figure out: Do I want to go ahead and start a siege fleet over here at Menace, or or at least like bring in a battle fleet? So I go with like my concept for fleets is. I have three kinds of fleets. I have battle fleets that are intended to do battle with enemy fleets, right? And then I have siege fleets that siege down the system defenses. And then I have invaders um, that after it's been sieged down and I actually invade the system, then I need to have the invaders there. So the invaders don't need to be there until you're invading. The siege don't really need to be there until you've dealt with any... Uh, Op opposing uh, fleets, enemy fleets. So uh, I wonder if I could bring carrier. Do I have carriers over here yet? <clears throat> They're close. We have attackers. There's a carrier there. Speed four. Let's see, how many command points is this? 13, 14, 15, 16, 22, 28 altogether? Hmm. 28 is kind of like 34. Tell you what, if I combine. All of these, it's only 7,000 attack power, but it's everybody with a movement of five. That can all go there. <clears throat> Let's do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, we'll put that there. We'll guard, and then if something pops out that we think we can take, we'll attack it. Doesn't seem like anything's popping out. Aha, there they go. Let's do it, attack. I see it's three, three little ships. I'm not, I'm not worried about what it is. Okay, so yeah. We are gun them 10 to one. <clears throat> so six there, six there, and four there. Cool, we'll do repair and recover. And 
I'm sure they'll retreat. It's a long time. Why is this taking so long? That was weird. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good that it took that long. <coughs> hmm. Did retreat. Siege ships, carrier. So I think there's one carrier, and everything else is a siege ship. So let's take everything except the carrier. And send it down here. Carrier I could direct over here, but I think I'm going to just put the carrier on guard. <clears throat> just to make sure no shenanigans happen with them slipping past here. I'm almost tempted to put them up here to Wasat, but I think I'll wait a little bit. Okay, so some of these made it to here. We could actually, it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit more siege over here, but it also wouldn't really make much difference. Three. Okay, these guys can make it. Okay, we'll move those two over there, and that'll get us to 100%, I believe. Yep, and that's everybody. You have to be careful before you allow a movement to go. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll be a surprise as to which fleet the game auto selects. Um, sometimes it'll auto auto select the thing that you you didn't want it to choose. <clears throat> okay, we'll go ahead and get these started up this way then. Hero headed up this way. Oh, what the heck? We'll just move everything. <clears throat> we have a bunch more fleet coming in here to BA next turn any, anyway, so it'll be guarded. Cool, so we're starting the siege on Menace, and Ibony will be invading next turn. <coughs> Might even move one of these siege ships out of here. Send him over. So that'll leave them uh, something like 14 defensive troops in place. Well, we just we just took this one uh, and it had over 150. So 
and we have more invaders now than we did before so invaders increase the maximum size of your landing force your attacking force so uh, let's see what happened around the map real quick before we wrap up this recording both uh, the invasion is still ongoing looks like it's almost done uh, it looks like Lumeris will finish off the United Empire and take the system I think next turn looks like next turn United Empire is down to 65 troops and Lumeris still have 690 and United Empire does not have any air power on their troops so that's a vulnerability elsewhere uh, the unfallen decided to pull their fleet back out of both uh twenty three thousand eight hundred nine thousand twenty thousand five hundred so uh, definitely some strong fleets over here that um, the Riftborn have but they're not not going to war yet that's 11,000 they have carriers so that's still in a holding pattern and what's going on over here so the Bajani that we're sieging Ash have left and one fleet's going over here to Silphi, one fleet's going over here to Cetus, and now they're sieging at Alcyon. So it seems like they're not interested in invading, they just want to siege different systems as an annoyance, maybe? Uh, there's a Sofun fleet here, with a couple of carriers, and they're going with bombers. Altogether, 22,600. Okay, that's a respectable fleet. Two smashers and two carriers. So two, two medium hunters and two large carriers loaded with bombers. Interesting. The smashers are... One, the smasher 5 is all guns. And the smasher... No, it's not all guns. It's all mass drivers or uh, rail guns uh, smasher 9 is lasers okay it'll be interesting to see if these guys throw down this seems like Sofun should uh, attack with this fleet that they have and crush the Vodiani fleet that has an attack power of 3000 um yeah, Sovans out have them outgunned about seven to one. <laughs> Not sure why they haven't actually already just taken the shot there and attacked. <laughs> uh, I'll zip around here to see if I have anything that needs moving at all. I need to get a um, a scout over here. Uh, but I guess I, I won't really need it. As soon as I capture the planet, I can just explore it. Okay. That seems to be all of the movement that I have remaining is those ships there and those two systems. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, the, the next stuff I'm going to do, I'm going to build out the, uh, the system build queues for these two. Uh, outposts that just became colonies. Uh, I'll move population around if I need to. Probably move some population from my uh, core, more established systems out to my outposts just to give them some, some uh, a little boost in their starting populations. Um, how are we doing with the weird bugginess over here at Ducey and Lyra? Let's take a peek. We are still have one population spot to go. There's two in the spaceport and no waiting to land at Duce, so that's cool. And Lyra has two population waiting to land. 
and the system is full and there are none in the spaceport. So let's just see if they will land if I lift two up. No, they don't. It might be a thing that, that uh, it triggers at the, when you um, advance the turn maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. Alright, cool. Yeah, I gotta build that stuff out everywhere. And let's see, how are we doing on our research? Cool, so we're doing Anomaly Framework next, which is gonna give us the ability to build these. So Pocket Laboratory is 9,000 industry. But School of Geniuses and Dust Bonanza are only 2200 2240 so that's not very expensive <clears throat> that'll increase our science and dust at systems where we have negative anomalies and then if we reduce the anomalies um, then it goes up even more so we're researching that and then we're researching the anomaly reduction tech um, and that'll be these two and then we'll be able to have this unlocked and we'll be able to research this endless technology which is if 508,000 so roughly nine or ten turns to research that we'll see um, what I might end up doing is uh, queuing up um, I, I may kind of uh, do some more uh, a urgent AI research to help that get along. I, I may just kind of do this, where you know, it's producing 2,500 industry, uh, whatever, 2,500 research, and then I convert industry over instead, and suddenly I'm producing 8,000. Right, and if I do that in a bunch of places, you know, we'll suddenly double or triple our research, and uh, you know, go from producing. 50,000 to 150,000, right? <laughs> Might do something like that uh, just for a few turns just to get this research done in, you know, three turns or four turns instead of ten. I might do that and then um, and then go back to cranking out carriers and siege ships and, you know, fleet. So we'll move all these things out of the build queues. All right, I mean, the, the hangers. Then we'll move all of these fleets. You can see how much stuff I built. We'll get all this stuff moved uh, up to, I think it was AK is the name of the system, right? That's probably all of it. get all of those uh, ships I just built yeah I'll, I'll send all those to AK and then from AK I'll forward them uh, up here and then we'll send them wherever it is we think we need them uh, depending on what these uh, what these big bad cravers uh, are doing to defend themselves I think that's about it for this recording. I'll, I'll do that other stuff off camera, and uh, we'll see you guys again next time. Uh, I guess it'll probably be turn 225 or so. Uh, let's see. My score is at 4,100. Cravers are 3,100, so I'm, a, I'm ahead by almost 1,000 points. I'm ahead by like around 950 points, so... Yeah, I guess as, as, as I take Craver Systems, my score goes up and theirs goes down, right? So I should, uh, should hopefully start getting a, a, a nice lead uh, over them. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to grabbing, uh, grabbing a bunch of these systems. That'll be good. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll put together a really big fleet 
and we'll have a big, massive throwdown, you know, carrier battle with you know, fleets that are, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 attack power. You know, big fleets of bombers and fighters going at it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get to see that soon. Fingers crossed, man. Hopefully, uh, Craver's put together a, a defense to try to stop me. It's, it's more fun when they fight back, right? All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.